welcome back to Red Glasses Talks. It's never too late to be found. Uh, you ever been lost? I remember when I was a young fellow, I think I was going into, or maybe in my 10th grade year in high school, and I uh, went out on a boat trip with my uncle, uh, one of his friends, and my stepdad. And we went out into the Gulf of Mexico. This is off of uh, Bradenton, Sarasota, Tampa, that area of, of the West Coast. And the, the boat was about a 32-footer inboard. I don't know a lot about boats. I sound like it. I really don't know hardly anything at all. But anyway, we're out there, and about halfway through the day, I mean, we're way out. I can't even hardly see the land. And the, uh, we, we shut the boat off, doing a little fishing, tried to crank it back up, and it wouldn't start. Well, I mean, all the rest of the day, we're trying to start the engine of the boat. It would not start. Now it's getting dark. And I remember late in the afternoon, this big ship came by fairly close to us. And I said, my goodness, if it's dark and if it gets foggy, which it did, this is a scary situation. But nonetheless, we were out there all day and all through the night in a dense fog. We were lost. So uh, there's nothing like being lost, but there's also nothing like being found when you've been lost. In Luke chapter 15, uh, hopefully you're familiar with this, if not in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, New Testament, go to the, to the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke, Gospel means good news, go to that Gospel and go to chapter 15, and I think it's around verse 11, Jesus tells a story about a, a young man and his dad and his older brother. And I'm not going to go over all the details, but here's what happened. The, the young son came uh, to his dad one day and said, Dad, I'm out of here. I'm tired of doing the farm work. I'm tired of doing all these responsibilities. I want my half of the uh, inheritance. I'm out. So his dad relented, and the boy left. And the Bible says he went out to the far country. Now, the far country represents reckless living. And you can read about it, what he did in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. So he's in the far country, and he's got all kinds of friends around him now because he's the party man. Man, he's buying everybody drinks. He's, he's underwriting it all. But finally, he runs out of money, and then he runs out of friends. And now he's hungry, and now he has no place to stay. So it ends up he's literally cleaning out the stalls for pigs and slopping or feeding the pigs. He was lost. You know, it's very interesting to me that we can be lost and not know it. To me, that is a tragedy, especially when it comes to our faith. Jesus says we're all lost. Jesus, scripture is very clear that we're disconnected, we're separated from the God who made us. We're lost. And the scripture tells us in Ephesians 2, 1, it says, and he's talking to the people in Ephesus who have become Christians. He says, and you were dead. Now, where did that come from? Well, if you look in Luke 15, 32, eventually the young boy comes home and you'll read about that. And it says he once was dead. In other words, he was, he was uh, separated from his father. And in the same way, we're all, when we're born, we're born separated from God. And so the people at Ephesus who had come to know Christ, he said, at some point before you came to know Christ, you were dead. What does it mean to be dead spiritually? It means to be totally incapable of responding to the life of God. And unless the Lord does something in us to begin to draw us to himself, to give us a willingness to to, to at least seek and, and to seek him. And by the way, when you seek him, the scripture says he will be found. He wants you to find him. So we're all dead spiritually. We can't respond to the life of God. Now, if you've come to know Christ, somehow, some way he used people, he used something, experience in your life or something else in your life to woo you and to win you and, to, and allow you to become open to 
who Jesus is, who his son was, and what he did for you. In Luke chapter 15, 32, the scripture says, he was lost, and yet now he is alive. When you come to know Christ, you come alive not only spiritually, but in every other way in your life. This young son came home. He finally, the Bible says, came to his senses. I wonder if you've come to your senses. Do you have friends and family around you that have not come to their senses? Are they lost? Do they need to be found? In Luke 19, verse 10, the scripture says, For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came to seek or find and save the lost. That was his mission. He came for you and me because we're all, all humanity is born lost, separated from God, dead, incapable in and of ourselves of responding to the life of God. So I've got a couple questions for you. Number one, have you gone to the far country? See, you can be a Christian, ticket punch, going to heaven, a John 3, 16er, and be in the far country. The far country represents any place where you've gone or are going that leads you away from an intimate relationship with the Christ you say you know, the Christ that you say lives in you. A non-believer, a non-Christian uh, is already in the far country, and it may not be horrible things they're doing, or it could be but they're away from him. They're separated from him. So if you're in the far country, you're lost. Even if you're a Christian, you can still be lost. Lost not that you're not going to heaven if you've asked Christ into your life. That's a done deal. Once he comes in, he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but you can still get lost. You know what I'm talking about. So have you been found? When did you come to Christ? Uh, do you know with a, a complete biblical assurance that Jesus lives in you? Uh, you know, some of you listening to this, or perhaps if you are a believer and you listen to this and are kind enough and thoughtful enough to send this to someone else, some of the people that will watch this, you might be lost. Have you come to know Christ? Have you received Christ into your life? The scripture says, in John chapter number one, verse 12, underline it. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. We're all not children of God. I hear sometimes people say, we're all children of God. No, we're not all children of God. We're not in God's family until we come to know Christ. And so we need to understand we all relate to God as our creator, but all humanity as a whole we're not all children of God. You've got to be brought back into the family. You have to be adopted back into his family when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You find that in Ephesians chapter 1. And so the question is, have you come to know Christ? Wow. <clears throat> Lost in the gulf all night long. The next morning, we heard a horn through the fog. It was the Coast Guard. They had been looking for us all night long. We had been found. So here's my thought to you. It's never too late to be found. You think about that. 